I never told you whether I chose more time or more life, did I? And it was really, really hard. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've been struggling with a decision over what to do about my cancer treatment for about the last, the last six months. I was a breast surgeon. I've had breast cancer three times. The first time back in 2015, and I've had two local recurrences. And I've been on treatment for life to stop me getting stage four disease. And that treatment involves two drugs. One is a bum injection in each cheek every month, and that's a form of hormone blocker. It's the next stage up from tamoxifen, anastrozole and letrozole. And I had it yesterday and my bum is really sore and I get a sudden surge of menopausal hot flushes and night sweats. And that's every month for life. And that, that's blocking the hormone receptors of any cancer cells that may come back or start to grow in the future. But the other thing I've been having is a drug called a CDK inhibitor called palbocyclib. And we now give this to people with metastatic ER positive breast cancer and to people with early stage breast cancer who have a high risk of recurrence. And they have it for about two to three years. And it's been shown to reduce their risk of a recurrence. And because I've had two local recurrences, my oncologist decided to put me on it for life to stop me getting stage four disease. And because I'm a local recurrence and there aren't trials, it's done through the Cancer Drugs Fund and I had to stay on that drug. And over the last year or so, the side effects have been getting really, really bad. And most of them I can handle. The fatigue, the hair thinning, the tiredness, the constipation. Seriously, I don't have a crap for 10 days in the bleeding piles, but you can get used to that. But the thing that's been killing me has been my mouth. And I've talked about this a lot. I have a very sore, swollen, blistered tongue. It's too big for my mouth, so it's really hard to talk, to sing, to record videos where I'm talking for more than five minutes or so. It stings. I lie awake at night and my tongue is burning. And anything like salty crisps, prawn cocktail flavour, ow, anything with chilli, anything vaguely spicy, anything metallic or tangy, I can't eat it because my mouth is so sore. I'm reduced to living off like really bland food, which isn't fun. But the final kicker on top of all of that was my loss of taste and my loss of appetite. I've lost five or six kilos in the last year, just through I don't want to eat. I've lost my appetite and everything now tastes awful. And it was like being back in chemo. Tea tastes like dishwater and chocolate tastes horrible and foods I used to love taste awful. And I've been facing that for the rest of my life on the chance that it might stop my cancer coming back. And I wanted to stop. I thought I cannot carry on like this, but my husband was like, and understandably, I don't want you to die. I do not want you to stop. Please keep taking the tablets. And I get it. And the dose has been lowered and lowered and lowered. You're meant to start on 150 milligrams for three weeks and have a week off. I've been on 75 milligrams for two weeks and two weeks off, but it's still been just as bad. And so I had a CT scan. How long ago now? About two weeks ago just to check that I didn't have metastatic disease because we know that 10% of breast cancer patients are diagnosed with stage four disease from the beginning and they have no symptoms. And that's scary. And I can go into that in another video. Waiting for the CT scan results was horrible. I was in that clinic with my husband and suddenly I felt sick. Now, the anxiety of waiting for results is really, really hard. And you put so much emotional energy and anxiety into imagining the worst. It's going to be stage four. I've got incurable. What am I going to do? How am I going to tell people? And you prepare yourself for it. And to go in and be told, as I was, the scan's normal. There's a bit of relief, but there is a huge anticlimax because you're prepared for bad news and all this emotional energy is nowhere to go. And then you think, well, that's great. My cancer hasn't come back, but I'm probably going to have to go through this again sometime in the future. And I don't know whether I can. But anyway, I digress. Um, my CT scan was normal. So I knew at the moment, I don't have any evidence of stage four disease. And I made the decision to choose more life over more time, possibly. No one knows what the future holds and my cancer could come back despite all the treatment or it may never come back, but I could not spend the rest of my days not being able to taste food or enjoy food or keep losing weight or have that constant burning pain in my tongue and so I've stopped and it's a bit scary. It really is a bit scary because I do worry. And now I think, right, I've stopped. So I need to be exercising every day and eating properly to reduce the risk of recurrence, but I'm busy. Life doesn't work like that. I don't have the energy. 
I've had to stop beating myself up for not being the perfect cancer patient, doing the things I tell all of you to do, because I have to be realistic. Life gets in the way. My mouth is slowly getting better. My tongue is slowly decreasing. I can almost sing again. But tea, oh, a cup of tea tastes normal. The thing my husband does for me, his love language, if you like, he brings me a cup of tea every morning before he goes to work. And I've not drunk it for a month because it's just, oh, other reasons I don't drink tea is because I'm too busy knitting and the tea goes cold. But now when he brings me a cup of tea, I can taste it and I can enjoy it. And it is such a glorious feeling. And I know that I've made the right decision for me. I've spent six months, nine months thinking about this, talking to my oncologist, going through the back and forths in my mind. It's not been an easy decision. And it's really hard when you are struggling with the side effects. And sadly, there's nothing that could stop the side effects I had. I used a different toothpaste. I was using Biotin and Oraleave that don't sting as much when you brush your teeth and mouthwashes and steroid lozenges, but they only work a little bit of the time and I just, I couldn't do it. But if you are struggling with the side effects of your breast cancer treatment, please don't stop your tablets before you talk to your oncologist or your breast surgeon because there are things they can do to help. Like me, they can lower the dose. They can think about giving you a treatment break. I had a month off to see if it made a difference and it made a little one, but it wasn't enough. Can they change you onto a different tablet to see if that'll give you different side effects? Are there things they can give you to help? Other drugs, like for the hot flushes I'm having, I take venlafaxine, an antidepressant, which helps reduce them. There are lots of things we can do before you take the drugs, because we know there was a paper that came out. Anecdotally, a lot of us don't take our drugs regularly because we hate the side effects, but a study has now shown that for premenopausal women who don't take their hormone blockers regularly, the outcome is worse. And we'd expect that because these are stopping your breast cancer coming back in the future and it can come back 10, 20, 30 years ahead. It's really hard. And part of me feels guilty and embarrassed for saying I, as a surgeon, who has looked after women who've had stage four disease, has decided to stop a treatment that might stop my cancer coming back. It's scary. It really is, but it's my mouth. Your, your mouth is such an important part. And for chemo, it's just five months. And I feel sorry for those on metastatic cancer because some of them are on chemo for many, many months, even years, and they have to live with that. But it comes back for a week. But I don't have that. It's not like I didn't have metastatic cancer. I know I may only be on the chemo for a certain amount of time before things change. I could have been looking at 20 or 30 years of not being able to eat food or enjoy food <clears throat> or never have a mouth that didn't hurt. So I made that decision. I stopped the palbociclib. I just have the bum injections. And is that enough? I don't know. A bit of me scared. But a huge part of me is relieved for doing what I know was the right thing for me. And it's been quite a gradual drop off of the side effects worsening. I'm still really constipated and it'll take a while for the drugs to get out of the system. But just, it's a relief. It really is. And I know I have a PIK3 mutation, PIK3. Um, in my lobular recurrence, that means it's likely to develop resistance to endocrine treatment. So if anything, it'll develop resistance to my bum injections, the Fasodex, which is a drug I really, really need. But there are drugs for those specific mutations that I can have in the future if it does come back. We don't know what the future of metastatic cancer will be like, so there is hope. But I'm just trying to push that out of my mind at the minute and just focus on what I need to do for now the videos I need to make to carry on explaining cancer and women's health and the next book I want to write and knitting and just try and find some joy in my life again. So thank you for watching. And if you want to know more about my story or how I cope with breast cancer, just let me know in the comments. And remember to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my videos explaining what cancer is, why it happens and how you can cope.